Bryce Young had his breakout performance on Sunday against Green Bay. Is that a sign of things to come? And have a couple Panther free agent wide receivers earn their spot in 2024? I'll answer those questions on this edition of the weekly Wednesday mailbag right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at at Julian Council, where one more time this regular season, next Wednesday, I'll be back to answer your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions. We'll do it again right now on the show today, but one final time next week. Then we move into the off season and the weekly Friday mailbag. Either way, either at me or DM me to get your questions in for next week's edition of the show on a Wednesday and then throughout the off season for the weekly Friday mailbag here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. If you do celebrate Christmas, I hope everybody has enjoyed their holiday season so far. The Carolina Panthers will be back in action on Sunday afternoon against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have lost one, two, three, four. Four straight games and are reeling as Trevor Lawrence has a throwing shoulder issue and he's also dealt with some concussions lately. So the Panthers have an opportunity to go to Jacksonville and beat up on a wounded Jags team. And then week 18 here at home, the Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield, their offense is on fire. Can they find a way to prevent Baker and the Buccaneers from winning the NFC South? So an important matchup on Sunday against an AFC South opponent, then a season finale against an NFC South opponent in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But let's get into the weekly Wednesday mailbag, the penultimate weekly Wednesday mailbag here in the 2023 regular season on today's show. And we'll start off with Jake. And shout out to Jake. I gave him a shout out, not by name, on Sunday, following Bryce Young's career performance, throwing for 312 yards, had a 110 rating, two touchdowns, no interceptions, the highest average yards per attempt he had all season long, and even adjusted as well. Bryce Young was outstanding in that loss against the Green Bay Packers. Jake, last week, asked me right here on this mailbag, with Joe Barry and the Packers defense reeling, is this the breakout performance for Bryce Young coming up? And I looked at some of the numbers in the Packers pass rush and just looked at the Carolina Panthers and how they struggle to protect Bryce Young all season long and also the receiver struggles. And I just looked at it and I just thought, you know what? I think it's just going to be tough to say that will be the case, even taking into account that, yes, the Packers have been struggling defensively. I didn't necessarily believe it would be that weak. And we talked to Peter Bukowski of Locked On Packers saying that this defense had any sort of pride at all. They would go out there and they would have success against the Carolina Panthers. Well, I guess... They have no pride, or is it that Bryce Young actually has figured it out? Because, Jake, you got it right. You called it last week. Breakout coming for Bryce Young, and it happened. Now, Jake asked this week, despite losing the game, does the offense showing life and Bryce breaking out for his best game outweigh the result? Absolutely. I could not care less about whether the Carolina Panthers won or lost on Sunday. Just be entertaining. Last year against Atlanta, that fantastic game, the P.J. Walker performance, his throw to D.J. Moore, it was an entertaining football game. It was frustrating in the way that they lost with D.J. Moore taking off his helmet, the missed extra point, the missed field goal. You hated how it went down, but at least you were entertained. And that is really the bar right now because most performances we've seen so far this season, especially from this offense, have been so hard to watch, just so boring. I don't even want to sit there and be there. But Sunday, okay, okay. If you're going to lose 13 games in a season, well, 
Make all 13 losses look like that. It will be exceedingly frustrating, but it's far better than what we saw against New Orleans, what we saw against Chicago, Indianapolis, pretty much every game that they've lost so far this season aside from Seattle, which was the second best offensive output until we saw the game, of course, on Sunday by Bryce Young. So Bryce Young being able to go out there, it took 16 weeks, 15 games for him as a starter, but it took him until that point or 14 games for him as a starter for Bryce Young to finally look like the guy the Carolina Panthers moved up to number one to go get. He looked like the real deal. And the only thing that's really mattered all season long, once the Panthers decided that, nope, we're not going to do the bridge. We're not going to have Andy Dalton start for the first six weeks, then go to Bryce. We're going to go with Bryce week one. He is our guy. When they decided that, the only thing that mattered, not the wins, not the losses, of course, are important. But what mattered the most was Bryce Young's development. And it's been skewed. It has been hindered by the decisions of the coaching staff, some of the players out there with Bryce. But the way that he performed on Sunday, that is encouraging. And that means way more than the Carolina Panthers losing a game to the Green Bay Packers. And the Panthers are already eliminated from the playoffs. Now, I know this fan's out there thinking there's a grand conspiracy. And Adam Thielen, a longtime Viking, spoke about the officiating afterwards saying, well, that's what you get when you play the Packers. The Packers, big brand, playing on Sunday Night Football, coming up here on New Year's Eve in a game against the Vikings where they're still alive, the NFC wild card. It makes you kind of wonder. But I, I'm not going to subscribe to that conspiracy theory completely. But yes, Bryce Young, his breakout, far more important than the Panthers losing 33-30 to in an entertaining game on Christmas Eve at Bank of America Stadium. All right, over to Mark now, who has a question about Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers' overall pursuit for a quarterback the last couple of years. Mark saying, in the Panthers' pursuit of a quarterback during the Tepper era, the Panthers have traded away Bridgewater, traded for Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and Bryce Young. Uh, the net cost was DJ Moore, two first-round picks, three second-round picks, a fourth and fifth-round pick, and $7 million. That was Teddy Bridgewater's salary. Even if Young ends up being the guy, do you think the loss of all those assets will delay the Panthers' path forward? So let's look at some of the deals Panthers have made under Scott Fitter. And I actually have a note on my MacBook uh, looking at all the trades that Scott Fitter has made and what those picks ended up being. For Teddy Bridgewater, the Carolina Panthers, uh, they – were able to get a 2021 sixth round pick. Uh, the Panthers ended up trading that sixth round pick to the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Philadelphia Eagles drafted Teron Jackson, defensive end out of Coastal Carolina. The Panthers traded that pick to Philadelphia, and they used that trade to move up to get Brady Christensen from BYU, of course, is their starting left guard when healthy. So trading away Teddy Bridgewater helped the Panthers get Brady Christensen. I think that's a pretty fair trade for a quarterback that you were ready to move off of and for a player when healthy who's been pretty solid on the offensive line for the Carolina Panthers. Now, Sam Darnold, the Carolina Panthers, sent the New York Jets a 2021 six-round pick, a 2022 second-round and fourth-round pick. That six-round pick in 2021 was traded by the Jets to the Chiefs, and that ended up becoming Trey Smith, offensive lineman out of Tennessee for the Kansas City Chiefs, who has been a phenomenal player for them. Panther fans are upset about 2021 and drafting Thomas Sanders. Was that his name? Whatever the long snapper out of Bama was, people fans are upset about that when really they should be upset about Deontay Brown, who's been only a practice squad player for the Carolina Panthers, another guard being drafted ahead of Trey Smith in that same sixth round during that 2021 draft class. Now, the 2022 second round pick ended up being traded to the Giants, then traded to the Falcons and became Arnold Avakete, the linebacker at Penn State, 2022 fourth round pick. Uh, was actually taken by the Jets, and that was Max Mitchell off at the tackle out of Louisiana. You watch the Jets at all, Max Mitchell is not factoring in to their offensive line. So the Darnold trade, you see who the picks that were used. The only pick that was used that has actually turned into a good player so far as Trey Smith and the Carolina Panthers in 2021 were able to move back multiple times and come away with 11 draft picks. I don't think you're looking at that year as a missed opportunity as far as trading away some of the draft picks, but 22, 20 and 2020 and 2020 with well, the 22 second round and fourth round picks. Yeah. Maybe it would be nice to have them with Baker Mayfield. The Panthers acquired Baker Mayfield from Cleveland for a 2024 fifth round pick, which could have converted to a fourth round pick had he played 70% of the snaps, which he did not. We have yet to see what that is going to yield for Cleveland. 
And then, of course, the Bryce Young trade, the Carolina Panthers swap first round picks in 2023. They moved up from nine to one. They gave up their second round pick, pick 61, which they acquired in a Christian McCaffrey trade from San Francisco. The 2024 first round pick is gone. The 2025 second round pick is gone. And, of course, they traded DJ Moore to Chicago. So far, the Panthers picks, the, the Bears traded the ninth overall pick to Philadelphia that's become Jalen Carter, who has been phenomenal so far. And then the second round pick was traded to Jacksonville. And that has been Brenton strange tied in out of Penn state, who has not really done much at all. Now in 20, 2021, we look at just assets taken like traded away. The Panthers again, came out with 11 guys in that draft, plenty of bites at the apple 2022, not as many bites at the apple and same thing with 23. And then you look at the 2024 class. We only have six, seven picks. Not a ton of draft capital for the Carolina Panthers. But you look at 21, really the problem is the Carolina Panthers just missed on so many of those guys. Terrace Marshall, five straight games, he has been a healthy scratch for the Panthers. Will he ever play another game in a Panthers uniform? Hard to believe that will be the case, especially with the emergence of a guy like Amir Smith-Marset and how DJ Chark's played lately. And we'll get into those guys here momentarily. Also looking at it, you have Brady Christensen as a starter. That helps. Tommy Trimble started to play really well, had a career high receiving yards and catches on Sunday in that close loss against the Packers. Jay-Z Horn, when healthy, has been a good player. Problem is he has not been healthy. Then outside of that, what have they gotten out of that draft class? I guess Chuba Hubbard was 2021 as well, but outside of those guys, everyone else later on in that draft is no longer here in Carolina. So not being able to get enough players – from that draft class to be high-level contributors, that hurts Carolina. In 2022, so far, you look at it, it's Icky who starts, and then Cade Mays is out there playing as well due to injury. But everybody else who's from that draft class hasn't done much. And in this rookie class, Bryce Young starting to look like the guy. Mingo, a couple stats on him coming up. Eh, not really been all that impressive. Jamie Robinson doesn't even play at all. DJ Johnson hasn't looked good. And Chandler Zavala was a complete liability when he was out there playing. So yeah, I think they could have used more draft picks. Absolutely. But moving forward, yes, the, it, if you look at the Bryce Young trade, if Bryce Young ends up being the guy, you're really not going to be all that concerned about what you lost as far as the draft class goes. The only thing that's going to really matter, though, as far as just looking at the picks, is that you really have to nail those picks and the Panthers are in a situation where they got a couple guys to get to figure out as far as what they're going to be paid coming here in free agency, some decisions of whether they want to keep around some players who were brought in by the fitter Reich regime. If Scott fitter sticks around, um, it's really hard to answer this question as a yes or a no right now until you kind of figure out whether Bryce becomes the guy because if Bryce becomes the guy, I don't think you're going to be all that concerned about what you did lose because finding a quarterback pretty much is paramount to everything else, but it would have been nice to have DJ Moore and be able to have the first round pick come up here in 2024, especially if it ends up being the number one overall pick. My hope is the Panthers went out and the Cardinals lose out. So the Panthers don't give up the number one overall pick. Even if that means having the second pick in a second round, I would rather have not traded away the number one overall pick. And, and that means missing out on the first pick in the second round. Totally fine with that. I will trade that any day. So, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts there on things. If Bryce ends up being the guy, that would be more important than anything else. But it would still be nice for the Panthers to be able to have more draft picks moving forward. But unfortunately, that is not the case. All right, we'll take a quick pause here on the show, then come back and I'll answer more of your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions here on Locked on Panthers. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. A killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal of out hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. And here locally in Charlotte, we got the Dukes Mayo Bowl going on at Bank of America Stadium. The Carolina Tar Heels facing off against the West Virginia Mountaineers. And if you want to get tickets to that, 
Go ahead. Game time. Perfect place to get tickets last minute. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code locked on NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get back into it. The weekly Wednesday mailbag here on Locked On Panthers. We'll have one more of these Wednesday mailbag editions as the Carolina Panthers will conclude their 2023 season following next week's show. Or is it? Yeah, next week's show. And then we'll move over to Friday, the weekly Friday mailbag throughout the entirety of the offseason. And then we'll be back to Wednesdays once the 2024 season gets underway. But over to Ben now. is a question about the wide receivers. Ben and Kurt. Two similar questions. Ben asking, did DJ Chark do enough to earn a new contract? And if he did, would you keep him, Thielen, and ISM as a wide receiver core and bring in a number one such as T. Higgins? Or do we need a couple more new faces instead? And he also asked, would you go all out for a wide receiver one slash two in free agency and use draft picks to improve the line edge and secondary positions instead? And then Kurt asked a similar question saying, the easy question is, where has this version of ISM that's Amir Smith Marset for those who are not initiated and DJ Shark been all year long. So I'll ask it this way. What's the line between seeing how they played the last two weeks and deciding whether we should factor them into the wide receiver plans next year? First and foremost, with this question about what to do with the roster next year, the Carolina Panthers need to hire a head coach. Right now, Scott Bitterer is still the general manager. There are many among the league who believe he's not going to survive. I'm not saying he's going to survive. I'm just asking why not get rid of Scott Fitter back when Frank Reich was fired. Why allow him to stay for the final six weeks of the season? Like what exactly is going to change in David Tepper's mind from then to six weeks later, that would make him decide that, okay, Scott Fitter is not the right guy for the job. I'm just a little confused. We have already seen in Los Angeles with the Chargers, by Tom Telesco, the general manager, by Brandon Staley. We have already seen in Las Vegas, sayonara, get out, don't ever come back. Josh McDaniel and Dave Ziegler, uh, the general manager there in Las Vegas. So they're gone. And we just saw in New York where their owner, Woody Johnson, said, Robert Sala, Joe Douglas, come on back. You're a pair. You're together. I would have thought that Frank Reich, Scott Fitter would be tied together, knowing that this is Scott Fitter's second general manager, and he was heavily involved in bringing Frank Reich here to Carolina. But for whatever reason, he remains. So I really need those questions to be answered before I can really give you a definitive answer on what will happen, really, and what they should do with the wide receivers, because that's so important. If Fitterer comes back, yes, he'd probably be more inclined to bring back the guys that he brought the Carolina, but we all understand the receiving core ain't really all that great. So they probably do need to go out there and make some changes. I don't know how significant the changes can be and will be, but they do need to make some changes. If it's a new general manager, then I wouldn't expect anybody really to be back aside from well, Mingo, who was drafted last year. And of course, Adam Thielen, or I guess Mingo drafted this year, but then Adam Thielen, because he's performed at a high level, but Adam Thielen's also gonna be 34 years next year. 34 year, years old next year. So maybe the new general manager doesn't want to do that. We'll see. But as far as looking at Amir Smith-Marset, DJ Chark, what they've been able to do the last couple of weeks, according to Next Gen Stats, and I want to look at really the season-long numbers of the three primary wide receivers here in Carolina. According to Next Gen Stats, they look at catch percentage, they look at separation, and so many other things. Looking at it, Jonathan Mingo, the Panthers rookie wide receiver picked in the second round, has the second lowest catch percentage in the NFL. 50%. Atrocious. DJ Shark is at 57.14%. And it's interesting. That's the exact same number as DK Metcalf, who we know is a dude. Gabe Davis, who has had a pretty good season in Buffalo, has similar numbers. Same with Garrett Wilson, who's had his own struggles because of whatever you want to call the quarterback situation with the Jets. So that's some pretty good players right there on par with DJ Chark as far as catch percentage this season. Then Adam Thielen's all the way up there at 74.22%. Now, as far as separation goes, and this has been the bugaboo for the Carolina Panthers wide receivers, the league average 
is 2.95 yards separation. The Carolina Panthers average separation. DJ Chark is bottom 11 in the league with receivers with 40 or more targets. He has a 2.2 yard separation. Mingo, 2.7. And Adam Thielen has a 2.8. So none of the Panthers receivers have separation that is at league average or even above league average. That is concerning. So you're talking about a receiver in DJ Chark who, while he has a catch percentage similar to, to Gabe Metcalf, Gabe Davis, Garrett Wilson, two pretty good wide receivers, his separation ain't great. Now, some other receivers out there who don't have great separation, but have put up bigger numbers than DJ Chark. Now, there's also the average yards after catch above expectation number. Adam Thielen, with all the catches that he's had, the amount of separation he's been able to get compared to the other Panther, Panther receivers, also looking at his catch percentage, He's at a minus 0.9. That's not good. And in Jonathan Mingo, as far as average yards after catch above expectation, minus 0.7. DJ Shark is above that at 0.3. Now, a couple guys that y'all are looking at as potential wide receiver ones. T. Higgins, his average separation is actually barely above DJ Shark. He's at 2.4. His catch percentage is 55.41. So pretty similar numbers to DJ Shark. But we do know that T. Higgins has been a better player. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., who's having a thousand yard receiving season, probably gonna be a pro bowler. His average separation is right around league average at 2.9. He has a 69.23 catch percentage. And Calvin Ridley, who I think is probably gonna stay in Jacksonville, he's nearing uh into a onto a uh, 1,000 yard receiving season. His average separation is 2.3 yards and he has a 55.93 catch percentage. So those are only a few numbers. I want to add some context to a couple of guys. I know Panther fans are going to be talking about come the off season, but even look at this past week, Bryce young, 312 yards passing two touchdowns, 63% completion percentage, 110 passer rating, the best game he's played as Carolina Panther. Let's look at the receiver's, separation in that game. Adam Thielen had a 2.91, which is right there near league average. Jonathan Mingo, 2.28, which is not close to league average, uh, lower than what he's done on average. DJ Shark made some big plays, two touchdown receptions. His separation was only 1.71 yards, y'all. Not great. And that kind of ties into the two touchdowns that he caught Bryce Young, the anticipation, the throw was right on the money both times. And then we look at Amir Smith-Marset, who's more of a runner. He only had one reception, one target in that game. And on that target had 0.98 yards separation. Then Tommy Trimble, the best. He had four catches, 59 yards, 3.61 yards of separation. By far better than all the receivers. Now let's compare that to what the Green Bay Packers receivers did. And mind you, the Green Bay Packers did not have Christian Watson did not have Jaden Reed and then lost Dante Wix at halftime. So three of the top receivers were barely available. Romeo Dobbs, who caught one of the more controversial catches of the season so far, at least here in Carolina, had 1.91 yards of separation. Bo Melton had 2.32 yards of separation. Tucker Kraft, the tight end, 3.9 yards. Dante Wix, 5.04. And Samori Torre, 6.79 yards separation. So looking at the Packers receivers working with Jordan Love, these are fourth, fifth, sixth string guys in a tight end, they had a more separation than the Panthers wide receivers. So just because Amir smith set has turned out to be a solid jet sweep option does not mean he should come back next year. If you want to have him as a returner, cool. If you want to use, utilize him as a jet sweep man, cool. But is he going to come out there and be a wide receiver you can depend on in a passing game week in, week out? I don't have much reason to believe that to be the case. And if Chris Tabor doesn't come back, do they want him to be here in Carolina? He's a free agent. They traded for him. That's great. I, I don't know. Um, and that's Scott Fitter who traded for him. DJ Shark. He's looked good the last couple of weeks with some of the catches he's made. Bryce Young's also had some pretty damn good throws to DJ Shark, especially considering the lack of separation in those games. He's finally doing what you hoped he would do. But two weeks cannot erase 14 in 13 games. I think he's missed one game. It cannot erase the rest of the season. Small sample size. Fine, he's played well, but the larger sample size, he has not been someone relied upon to make big plays and does not make things happen down the field like you hoped or yards after the catch. So for me, the Panthers need to go out there and rebuild the wide receiver core around Jonathan Mingo and Adam Thielen. Everyone else, they can go.
They do not need to be back, be back here. They come out and play well the next two weeks. Still, the larger sample size will tell you they're just not the good enough difference makers. The Panthers need quicker wide receivers. They need playmakers. Shark's not a playmaker. Amir Smith-Marset, in large part, is not a playmaker. Thielen can still make some plays for you as a slot possession receiver, and Mingo hasn't shown you a lot. The Panthers need speed, need guys that are true difference makers in the NFL. I'll ask you this. If you're a defensive coordinator on another team, are you afraid of Amir Smith-Marset? Are you afraid of DJ Shark? Are you afraid of Jonathan Mingo? Are you afraid of Adam Thielen? The answer is no, 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 and no. The Panthers need guys where that question is yes. DJ Moore was a yes. But these guys, not. Not the case. So, yeah. Go find some new receivers. All right. Going to take one more pause here on the show, then come back and answer one more question here on the weekly Wednesday mailbag, mailbag on Locked on Panthers. Price Picks is the most fun you'll have winning up to 25 times your money this football season. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. With the basketball season finally here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players in different sports or leagues. And I really hope you all did this. Uh, maybe not this one in particular, but I do hope you got in on the Specials League on Christmas Day because you could have an example like this, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at 10.5 combo, three-pointers made and receptions. No things didn't go well for the Chiefs. Did not watch a single second of the NBA. So no idea what happened with the Lakers in the game that they played, assuming the Lakers played on Christmas Day, which they always do. Price picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Price Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to pricepicks.com, says Locked On NFL, and use code Locked On NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com, slash Locked On NFL, and use code Locked On NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. One final question here on this penultimate weekly Wednesday mailbag edition here in the 2023 NFL season on Locked On Panthers. Over to Brody, who asked, why Ben Johnson? Do you hire Ben Johnson over Jim Harbaugh? Do you hire Ben Johnson over Steve Wilkes? Why Ben Johnson? I looked over at the books to find out where the betting odds currently were uh, as far as the Carolina Panthers and their next head coach, or are as far as the Carolina Panthers and their next head coach. They're plus 300, Ben Johnson as the favorite. Next up, plus 450, Kellen Moore, plus 900, Ajero Averro. Jim Caldwell and Bill Belichick, plus 1,000, Brian Johnson and Eric Bieniemy, plus 1,200, Jim Harbaugh. Why Ben Johnson? Well, because Ben Johnson is going to be the most sought after head coaching candidate this cycle. Why? Because the Detroit Lions just won the NFC North for the first time in history. I am 30 years old. The last time the Lions won their division was in 1993. I was nine months old the last time the Lions won a division title and had a home playoff game. So yeah, the guy who's the architect to that offense is able to do that. He's somebody that you should be interested in. And of course, there's the ties where he went to high school and grew up in Asheville. He went to North Carolina, was a walk-on quarterback, didn't play. And I, always, I thought that was funny. I was talking to my dad about this the other day. I've been watching Carolina football my whole life. And there's no way that Ben Johnson actually played quarterback at New York, at North Carolina. And I didn't know about him until like a year ago. So I always find that funny. He didn't play at North Carolina. He was just on a team. So congratulations. It's like Arthur Smith didn't play. He was on the team. So Ben Johnson, Carolina guy through and through North Carolina guy as well. And all that. And then of course there's a great office mind. That's what David Tepper reportedly wants. That's what he went out there and got last year. So, yeah, the Lions, their offense is awesome. Ben Johnson, he's that dude. All that, we've heard it ad nauseum at this point in time. Jim Harbaugh, he's got a big-ass game coming up on New Year's Day in the Rose Bowl against Alabama. So, we'll see what happens there. And even once the National Championship's over, like they can talk to Jim Harbaugh. I'm sure if Jim Harbaugh's interested in the job, there's already some, been some back-channel discussions as far as whether there's any sort of attraction there from the Carolina Panthers side last year, reportedly the Panthers weren't interested when Harbaugh came out 
and said he will, he wanted the job. I do wonder whether Jim Harbaugh who's probably going to want a significant amount of personnel control is someone that would mesh well with David Tepper. There's plenty of people out there in the media who have discussed this and they do not see it meshing. I think that maybe Harbaugh can come here, have success for four, five years, and then it's just going to just burn up because him and David Tapper are not going to get along. And Harbaugh is someone who just wears on individuals. You go back to his time in San Francisco, read anything about it. Yeah, they had success, but at the end of it, everyone was just sick and tired of Jim Harbaugh. Even at Michigan, they were starting to get tired of him until, well, he started to beat Ohio State and they started to go to the playoffs. But you don't think it's a little sick and tired of Jim Harbaugh with all that's gone on? with the whole Connor Stallions and the sign stealing and then his, his multiple suspensions, some of it with NCAA stuff with recruiting, and if they lose Alabama, you're going to wonder if this up in Ann Arbor, they're kind of ready to move on from Jim Harbaugh. So I think he would have success. I don't know if it would be long-term sustained success, which David Tepper promised us after he fired Ron Rivera, but I do think it would work for a short term. As far as Steve Wilkes, uh, I just, I, I'm not going to speak in absolutes because only a Sith speaks in absolutes and say he's not going to come back to Carolina, but it's hard to think he's going to come back to Carolina to bail out David Tepper, who did not hire him a year ago. And he may have other opportunities out there as a head coach after San Francisco has been a phenomenal team. And as a team that people think can win the Super Bowl even after the loss to Baltimore on Monday night football. So yeah, Ben Johnson, he's just a heart. He's a hot candidate. He fits everything the Panthers, at least David Tepper, apparently has been looking for. It makes a lot of sense. Um, probably even more sense than Harbaugh and Steve Wilkes. Maybe not Wilkes, but I don't know. I just, I think it's healthier to stop lingering on Steve Wilkes coming back to Carolina. All right, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where I'll be back with you one final Wednesday next week for a weekly Wednesday mailbag, either at me or DM me following the Carolina Panthers game against Jacksonville to get your questions in for next week's show. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding. And I'll talk to you all on Thursday for a weekly crossover edition with Whoever hosts Locked on Jags. Don't know who it is. We'll talk to him tomorrow.